Hi guys, welcome to SSA Athletics and the reason why I'm so close to the camera is because the London, London 2012? That's about four years too late, Adam. Got my maths wrong again, that's eight years too late. <laughs> Round two. And today, welcome back to SSA Athletics. We're gonna try and explain why so many world records as well as meeting and area and national records are being broken in this Olympic year. Especially after the pandemic 2020 season, which basically disrupted everyone's training. Now guys, if you could smash subscribe, helps the channel out a lot. Check out our Facebook page, both the SSA Facebook page, as well as our training page, where you can receive tips and more information about the club. Furthermore, you can also check it out, check us out on our web page. Here it is! It's new, it's good! And today on SSA Athletics, we're gonna try and answer why are so many world records being broken? Especially with the fact that the pandemic has heavily affected everyone's training, so in theory, there shouldn't be so many world records being broken. The pandemic of the 2020 and 2021 has affected heavily all aspects of life, yet world records have tumbled and more world records have tumbled than usual. With Warholm, Krauser and De Plantis breaking their world records in their respective events, the 400 meter hurdles, the shot put and the pole vault, as well as a plethora of national records and area records being broken. Leading into the games, there has been seven world records that have been broken. Usually in an Olympic year, we normally see between one to three world records with the vast majority of those world records happening actually at the Olympic Games themselves. And there is no significant impact, well, quantitatively anyway, in terms of the longevity of the world record. And this is often counter to what we perceive as being floodgate theory. However, this kind of ignores certain events, certain track events where there is no world record and suddenly that world record breaks and then a whole plethora of world records happen after that, after that being broken. Although possibly wrongly applied, floodgate theory means that if something wasn't possible and then as soon as one thing happens, it opens up the floodgates, allowing all sorts of things to happen afterwards. So in terms of our world records, one record breaks and that encourages everyone then to break the world record more continuously and with more consistency. And be, truth be told, we don't quite know why this is the case. Now, going back to our world records this year, this could be because of a number of reasons. First reason could be because of under-the-counter supplements. And guys, if you do choose to do that way, we recommend that you don't. It will risk your health and your career to do so. Not only that, is it cheating and the chances are you may get found out, which will have a sociological impact upon you. And of course, naturally, when it comes to these kind of things and we see the impossible, and because of athletics history, it does make people wonder and ask questions. Now, like in any year, there's always gonna be some athletes who, get, who do the naughty naughty and get themselves caught. Now, in 2020 and leading into 2021, especially over 2020, drugs testing wasn't as consistent as it previously was because of the need to keep the drug testers, the drug testers' family and wider society, as well as the athletes, safe. So to check what, uh, what he's drinking. <laughs> so there is also a potential chance in those vital months in winter that some athletes may have got away with doping. On the other hand, we are also forgetting that these athletes who are breaking the world records were the top athletes in the world and were likely to break the world record at some point in their career. The Chinese race walker and Christian Varholm are examples of this. As mentioned previously, the pandemic heavily affected people's training. However, the vast some of these, like the Chinese race walker and Christian Varholm, are were from countries that were least affected. Their lockdowns weren't particularly affecting them personally, either because of their, they were exempt training-wise, or whether there wasn't a lockdown as per se in their countries during the time period where they needed to do the most amount of training, and the most heaviest of training, that being in the winter. Because in athletics, we do our conditioning in the winter, we do all the heavy stuff, the heavy lifting, the, the hard donkey work in the winter, and in the summer, we are preparing out and tapering ourselves ready for a competition. If you like, in the summer, we are fine tuning. And what we are likely to see is a greater range potentially in between the best times and the, the not so good times within these Olympic games. 
Now you always get a big range, but when you get round to the semi-finals and the finals, that range is not there. Now it could be there because of the how many athletes are potentially unfit. Their training's been heavily disrupted and therefore they themselves aren't particularly fit enough to be able to compete. Take for instance Mo Farah, although you could say his age as an example, or Laura Waitman as another example. And sometimes you can't just brace yourself to super fitness. That super fit peak you need to break a world record or win an Olympic gold. Likewise though, if we're getting now seven or five, five to seven world records now, the likelihood is there are gonna be more world records in this Olympics. So this should be a very exciting Olympics to come. I'm Adam McCarthy of SSA Athletics, and I will hope to see you in the next one. Bye.